Gaza, where the Israeli military continues to move its forces further into the central and western parts of Rafah after plunging the city into total darkness overnight. Israeli forces have seized more of that border area there with Egypt, known as the Philadelphia Corridor. Now, that area is about 14 kilometers in length. It's meant to be a demilitarized buffer zone running along the Gaza-Egypt border. This all comes as Israeli strikes targeted various areas in Rafah overnight, as well as in the early hours of Wednesday. Nearly all the hospitals there are now out of service. Well, let's get the latest from the ground and speak to Hani Mahmoud. He joins me now from Deir al-Bala in central Gaza. Hani, as we've been reporting more Israeli movements in and around Rafah in the last day or so, talk us through exactly what you're hearing. <laughs> Yes, well, for the past 20 days, the Israeli military has been pushing its uh, occupying forces at the center of Rafah city all the way to the western part. That's the eva evacuation zone where literally we're looking at thousands of displaced Palestinians who have nowhere else to go. We're looking at there's no safe zone, no safe place to go to, but also there's no escape uh, away from the genocidal acts taking place in Rafah city right now. Particularly the past three days have been quite difficult. We're seeing an exponential increase increase and surge in the attacks that are carried out by the Israeli military supported by the occupying forces that are now they are their artillery shelling and the tanks shell are reaching as far as the vicinity of the Kuwaiti hospital that's at the center of the city and also along the remaining part of the Philadelphia corridor to the southern part of the strip between the Rafah and Egypt uh, borders and what seems to be the Israeli military is pushing deeper and soon enough uh, from the judging from the patterns of the attacks and the bombing uh, soon enough this operation is not going to be limited It's in fact quite unlimited right now and we are uh, days away from the Israeli military taking over the entire uh, city of Rafah and of course that has a, a negative implications on the ground not only we've been seeing this a rapid mass killing of civilians inside evacuation zone like the past two days where an attack on the northern western uh, part of the city where at least 45 people were killed including children and women the scenes of the decapitated children and the uh, the, the shredded uh, babies as well inside the tents and the women who were taken into hospitals in the area also within the past 12 hours another attack very close to the, eva the, the first one also uh, it's a tent site where 21 people were also killed and we, we look at the same exact pattern of casualties women and children making the vast majority of casualties of these deliberate attacks on areas that have been designated as safe zones by the Israeli military. As people in the area are living with shattered sense of safety and security right now. They're pushed into further enforced displacement, not only to uh, the evacuation zone, but il elsewhere in the western Khan Yunus, the remaining part of Amasi, as well as the central area that is becoming overcrowded right now. Annie, as you say, so many of these attacks are taking place in areas that people were told were safe. So what is the situation right now for civilians, particularly in the south, given that all the hospitals are now closed? Quite dire situation created by this intense bombing campaign. We're in fact looking at an, an, a crisis that is above emergency. Not only people are being herded from one place to another by the quad captors, by the intense bombing campaign, moved into areas that are supposed to be safe, but they're not safe. But the infrastructure, the facilities that are supposed to be there to support people are pushed uh, to the point of, of offering no services whatsoever. And by that, I mean the health facilities that are quite vital right now at these difficult conditions. The vast majority of these hospitals, nearly all of them, with the exception of one maternity health facility, a small one in western part of Rafah city. And soon enough, given the insufficient medical staff, as well as the shortage of medical supplies, this maternity health facility is going to close down. All the field hospitals were forced to uh, shut down and, uh, uh, and, and shut services and moved all the way to Khan Yunus in, in different locations. They were forced to relocate and uh, start field hospitals in different places. The two uh, official public hospital, the Kuwaiti hospital and the Najjar hospital, they were forced uh, to be out of service given the intensity of the, the bombing campaign and the, the, the all of their, uh, almost their, their, their vehicle, the ambulance, the, the the inability to get medical supply to these facilities uh, it become 
unsafe situations for everyone, including the injuries and the patients inside these two facilities that are forced to relocate uh, elsewhere in western part of Khan Yunis city. And again, we're looking at the Mawasi evacuation zone, and it's not, it hasn't been largely safe. We've seen the patterns of attacks on these zones, and which confirm, quite consistent with what people have described, that there is no safe zone in a war zone. Hani Mahmoud there reporting for us from the ground. Today from Daryl Bala in central Gaza. Thank you, honey. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.